and uh, the beautiful images. Um, some of those were scanned by Art Store, um, but the, that was the Far Eastern art was scanned by Art Store. Um, so those are available through that service, but um, the Western art is not. So we're scanning that in-house and making it available from the OTL. Um, vendor images, we will purchase and lease images um, when they're um, available from a different source. Um, and um, we'll also receive permission requests for images that we own that other people are requesting from us for publication. So those last two things go through a completely different type of workflow um, than anything that we digitize in-house. So once an order um, starts, there are different um, images that can be rushed. And um, you see that the things are kind of um, tinged in yellow. Those um, are eligible for rush orders, which bypass cataloging um, for the special delivery. Um, permissions requests are also um, delivered um, in a special way. Um, as orders come in, this is our image request sheet. It's a, it's a cover sheet, so every order as it comes in, um, this information gets logged right at the beginning. And it tells us what's needed for the order, um, what the original type is, when the order is needed, um, and um, you know, just all of the different information um, that was um, recorded in that top line. Um, is recorded here. The order comes in and it's logged and this starts the process of assigning a number to the order so that we can track it throughout the whole process. Um, it's also um, initiated in the database, which is, um, Iris is our database, and so that's the one cataloging step that, that still takes place at the beginning. Um, and um, once again, I know that this is you can't really see it from out there, but this is um, our blog, um, and it tracks all the different information um, related to the order from start to finish. And as we're working on this order, this is where we uh, go in and check things off. Um, people will sign off when they've finished a certain part of it, whether it's cataloging, imaging, quality assurance, etc. cetera. Um, it also, um, um, let's see, the, you know, the order number is started over here, we have a date, um, any information if a book is involved, um, and um, special projects. Um, this is just someone entering information in the database, and then this is our imaging workflow. Um, <clears throat> the image, um, let me stand here. Um, the Im all image orders that come in, they're prioritized by due date first. Um, and we, things are very uh, non-linear in our department because we're teaching based as opposed to collection space. Things can, we can be working on a project or several projects and something will come in for a rush order and it pushes everything else aside. Um, we tried to get around that in the past and discovered that it was just futile um, to do that because our mission is to support the faculty in their teaching. So. Um, so that's what takes precedence over everything else. Um, so things are prioritized by due dates, we shift as needed, um, and um, once things are initiated, um, a different workflow um, goes into process or a different task list um, depending on what the order is. So processing permission requests, and I won't go through all the details on this, but I will show you examples of the task list for the difference between photography scanning and scanning of special project. Um, and the one thing that um, you will not see is the, where the, the bulk of the work takes place, and that's <coughs> the post-process imaging. And um, with collection type photography, you have a lot of control over the setup and the capture in the beginning. And when you have that control, you um, can lessen your time in post-processing, and that's the goal. You want to make sure you're spending the, li the least amount of time in post-processing as possible, because you do have so much control over everything that you're doing, the lighting, the, the focus, everything. With um, the type of imaging that we're doing at History of Art, a lot of times it's flip flop. We have images that are horrible to begin with, and we need to make them look better. 
So we have a lot of time spent with post-process imaging. And that's um, the step that is not, um, is not shown in this book. Um, so, but basically, um, the images come in. If it's photography, they go through a raw workflow. We capture um, uh, grayscale, um, actually the DG color checker. Um, we capture that, a strip of that in every chart, so it has a white tile, a black tile, and a gray tile. We use that to set the color in the raw workflow, and that um, follows through in the crop all the way to Photoshop, and we use it to set the white balance, the um, gray balance in the black, white, gray, and black point in Photoshop. Um, we still use it at certain opacities in those layers. Um, um, so I, I don't need to get into so much detail there, but once I start talking about that, I'm hard to stop. So um, um, the file names are assigned. Um, the orders go through quality assurance. Um, if there are problems with quality assurance, um, layered files are put up on the server for the technician to review so that they can see the changes that were made, whether it's to color or to tone or whatever. Um, if those, if those um, changes were really significant, then we have a side-by-side -side review of that and the training um, session takes place at that point. Um, contact sheets are made, they follow through with the order to the end. If there are special derivatives, this bypass takes place. Um, the paperwork is finalized and the order goes to cataloging. At the same time, we run the automation drop. This tags our image files. Um, and creates derivatives which are sent both to the digital library and to our master's location up on the server. So that script takes care of all that um, tagging and delivery that we need to take place with every single image. Um, so once it makes it to cataloging, um, the content is cataloged, image research is done, and once again, this is a simplified version. It doesn't look simple, neither of these do, but um, it's a simplified version. Um, the ID entry is done, matching it up to um, the file name in, that was assigned in imaging. Um, the source material is returned once the order has made it to UODL. Um, there's a data load that takes place with the digital library twice a week. Once that data is loaded, the image has already been dropped at UMDL. That matches up and theoretically it shows up online. Most of the time, you know, 98% of the time it does. Um, there's quality assurance that takes place um, in cataloging. If the image does not show up, then it goes back and the numbers are verified. Um, if that doesn't take place most of the time, it was a problem with the image drop or there was a hiccup in picking up the images. Um, if the images are loading properly, there's another step. Sometimes portfolios are created if they're requested. Um, and the um, requesters are notified that the order is completed and the order is closed up at that point. So this is the back of the form that I showed you earlier. This tracks all the information that is related to cataloging. And um, just stepping back, um, we'll start looking at the task list sheets that are created um, for the different steps. This is the, um, for every single order, we have that cover sheet, which on the front, it has what's requested for the order. On the back, it has the workflow for cataloging. Then we have a separate sheet that is the workflow for imaging. Um, and those sheets vary based on what the order is. So it's a, if it's photography, um, this is the workflow sheet that's used. And you can see um, <coughs> this is the top portion of the sheet up here. Um, and instead of having a task list that is taped up to the wall or at every imager's desk, we have a list that's attached to the order. Um, and much like um, Kyle and uh, Mark were talking about this morning, where they put the imagers' um, initials as part of the file name, we have the imagers' initials recorded on this sheet. So there's um, a signing off on who does what task and what date. Because I think it's important to do this because there have been times where you know you have to go back 
and um, take care of things. And it was, you know, interesting to hear that you guys do the same thing. We, when I first started at History of Art, we ran into a lot of things, and at that time it was just setting up a systemized way of doing things. So it's natural that there would be more times that that kind of um, thing would happen. But um, but it, it's still important to um, to you know to track this. So um, but then again, you know, it could just be preference. Um, we. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, we used to have every single step written down when we had students um, doing the images. Um, at this point in time, because we have people with um, advanced Photoshop skills, there are different ways to do things in Photoshop, and everybody that works in our department is uh, pretty versatile with it um, and, and talented. And um, we need to, I just put down in there what it is that they need to keep in mind to track and to take care of while they're in there. Um, and then it's during those individual training sessions that we review, hey, this is a really great way to take care of this, or this might be faster to do it. Um, have you tried doing it this way? Um, uh, and we all learn from each other with that, too, um, because everybody learns things from all over the place. So um, that exchange of information is really valuable. Um, so basically, um, I won't go into the details here, but you can just see the, the types of things that, that are tracked, shooting the images, processing the TIFF files. And um, the only reason why we switched away from what Gil was talking about earlier, about the excruciating detail, is because we switched the type of technician that is in this position. If we were still working with students, I would certainly have every single detail written down. And I would have pictures. And, I, and we used to have a manual with pictures. Um, so um, there's, it's just a difference um, in who's doing the work. So um, our scanning workflow looks uh, much the same. We have a lot more detail, um, you can see, in this area. We um, process existing images. We take a look at images that have been done in the past. If they need to be redone, we redo them. And then we have a whole other workflow for deaccessioning the existing files. Um, for um, scanning new images, the specifications are written right down here. And then at the bottom, um, I put recommendations down. Um, and for the jamming of the um, batch feeder in Scanner, um, we have thickness variants in thicknesses in our slides. Some old glass slides are really thick. There are old metal mounts that are really thick. Then we'll have some paper mounts that are super thin. Um, and um, plastic mounts, which are also um, uh, very in thickness. What we discovered is the best way to handle that is to separate them out by thickness or by type um, and to set up the batch scanner. So that's the first thing with a slide order is um, when you're working in batches, separate out your slides first by RGB and grayscale um, because they're going to have different settings in the scanner. And then um, separate them out by thickness um, and do them in batches of the thickness by color mode. Um, and um, we just create the settings you know, for those different groups. Um, yes. and. So here's one thing that's very very specific. Um, convert the color profile first step. Anytime you run across something that keeps getting forgotten, put it in the workflow. Put it in as a step. Another example, record stats. We <laughs> we reached a point where we were like halfway through a term and I went and looked at the stats and there was nothing <coughs> in there. And it was just that everybody kept forgetting to record their stats, which you know makes it difficult to draw up reports at the end of the Term. So um, we have another workflow which is made specifically for a special project. Uh, the Borbador project has both, um, uh, it's an archival project that has both our, um, photographs and slides in it. Um, and the challenge with this is that um, the, we wanted the numbering to be sequential from the beginning to the end, but the slides are interfiled with the photographs. So we can't separate it out by format and have it be um, simple like that. And the photographs are scanned um, much quicker than the slides, 
which is, um, or the processing of them is much quicker. The scanning is, you know, not necessarily. But um, the specifications for the photographs were so specific, and this was in the testing phase, just like Gil talked about, um, when I do the testing on this stuff, I'm very meticulous. It kind of drives me crazy, really. You know, writing down every single thing, every time you make a change to the software the settings or whatever, um, make a note and then write that up at the end. And I noticed with the photographs, um, we were scanning them with a grayscale bar, right in the flatbed scanner. Everything was going to be the same for every single photograph. So I wrote an action for Photoshop to be used as part of the workflow. And <clears throat> it's great in terms of efficiency, but it's horrible in terms of um, the person doing the job because it's so monotonous, you know? There's no, it requires no creativity whatsoever. Um, so um, multitasking certainly takes place during this portion of it. Um, in fact, the person that works on this um, works on both of these simultaneously. He has both scanners running on the same computer and does imaging at the same time. So he's working on three things at once um, while doing this. Um, and there's a challenge with that as well because he'll have to have temporary file names on um, the uh, scans for the photographs if he has um, slides that are scanned beyond the photographs, so, um, or vice versa. Um, and that brings up an interesting point. If you, um, somebody had asked about file naming earlier. Um, if you need to rename files, there's a really great program out there that's very cheap. It's called the Better Finder Rename um, that we have found really useful. It's very versatile and um, it uh, lets you rename files in nonlinear ways. So you can change text in the middle of a file and you can do it to you know, a thousand files at once. You just you know, drag and drop them in. Um, you can, it's, it's very, very versatile as to what it can do. Um, so if you find yourself needing to rename a bunch of files, I would suggest looking into that um, program. Whereas if you're just gonna rename everything, um, the whole file name, Bridge will do a great job because you have to rename everything in the file, so, or just insert something in the beginning or the middle. Um, okay, so, um, assigning the file name, we uh, keep a digital log, and this is much different than what I've heard people talk about with file names. You use um, a totally different system than what we do. We have a sequential numbering system, um, and it's different based on whether it's from an archive or, um, or if it's just an uh, image that we're creating. But we track this information in a digital accession log, um, and um, it just keeps running. We use Google Docs um, to do this. We um, tried Excel in the past and, and ran into some issues with it, sharing it on the server. So for a while, we had it manual, which was just a nightmare. But, um, but Google Docs has been great for all this stuff. Um, Contact sheets, as I mentioned before, these get attached to every order. You can see the order numbers up in the, right in the corner. If you end up doing anything like that, just stay consistent with whatever you do. And um, notable changes um, being made. Um, this is um, our server system. I just wanted to show quickly. We have um, things separated out. <coughs> when um, items are in progress at the end of every day, um, we all drive our folders up to the server so that if somebody can't make it in the next day, if you need to keep working on something, you can do that. Um, QA, um, when things are done, things go in the QA in folder. Um, post QA review is up there as well. And then um, when we complete the order, um, the script is run, it creates um, drop files that go along with the order. And you can see that they are dropped um, to UODL in a drop folder. They actually pull from our server. We give them permission to one of our folders. They pull from our server. And um, everything gets tagged so that um, it fits with their system the way it needs to. Um, the images are transferred over. And then um, they also go into our master's um, system as well. 
violent system. So um, that's it. That is um, our work. <laughs> so um, it's um, complicated, but it's um, we've streamlined it a lot. And um, as Gil was talking about, look for those areas that you can. Um, that are repeated over and over again and make them as most efficient as possible. And I think when you have complex systems like this, I mean, they are, that's what they're complex, you know. Um, so that's the nature of them. So, does anybody have any questions? So that ends day one. You got questions, Hank? Right?